Okay. All right. Let's um let's go ahead and get started. It is just about that time. This uh, this workshop, we're going to be building an AI powered Discord bot, and we're going to be using Twilio Autopilot. I am. Let's see, I'm Steve Tingaris, and I am the uh, the founder and managing director of Dabble Lab, and Dabble Lab is a technology services company. We mostly focus on building uh, conversational bots and AI assistants for enterprise and enterprise support applications. We're a uh, Twilio partner and I'm also a Twilio champion. Before we jump into, most of this is gonna be walking through the steps. Before we jump into it, let me just give you like a high level outline of what we're gonna be doing. I'm going to guess that if you're watching this, you're probably familiar with what Discord is. Uh, but just in case, Discord is a, uh, a messaging and collaboration environment that allows you to create, um, they call it like invite only, a place where people can collaborate. So it's, it's very similar to like Slack. Uh, if you're familiar with Slack, uh, again, I, I'm guessing that if you saw the title, you're probably familiar with Discord. There's a web version and there's a desktop uh, version for Mac, Windows, and Linux. We're going to be walking through all of this using the web version today. All right. Now, the bot that we're going to be building is a... Uh, a support bot, so uh, like a bot to answer frequently asked questions or support questions that users might have, and they're going to do that from within a Discord server. But handling the questions and doing all the natural language processing, all that kind of stuff, that's all going to be done by Twilio Autopilot. And if you're not familiar with Twilio Autopilot, uh, Autopilot is uh, Twilio's AI, conversational AI platform, and it is. Uh, a great platform for building both chatbots and voice bots for conversational IVRs, web chat, mobile chat. It supports a number of channels out of the box where you can just plug in, build the bot, and you're ready to go. Uh, some of those channels are SMS, supports uh, Facebook Messenger, supports WhatsApp. It doesn't support out of the box uh, Discord, however, which is why I wanted to do this workshop. It's really easy to do. You'll see that in just a minute because there is a, a custom channel that you can use to really enable the uh, the autopilot functionality, the, the, the chatbot, the AI functionality in pretty much any messaging environment. We're going to um, have to glue the requests that are coming in from um, Discord and we're going to need to like proxy those over to autopilot and back and forth. So we've got sort of a, a middle component that we're going to need to set up. And we're going to use um, replit.com to do that. If you're not familiar with replit, it's a web-based uh, IDE. The, the IDE part, we're not going to be using so much. I've got the code ready to go. And I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but the other thing that replit provides is, uh, is hosting. And so we're really using Replit for, for this example, more for the hosting than the, uh, the code editor. But it, it is uh, a full it, it, IDE, full uh, interactive development environment uh, and code editor. So we've got three things. We've got Discord we're going to be working with, uh, Twilio, Twilio Autopilot, and, uh, and Replit. There's a little bit of code involved here. And so because of our, our time, rather than writing that all from scratch, I've pushed all of this stuff out to a GitHub repository. This, if you go to github.com slash dabble lab, again, github.com slash dabble lab, you'll see it. It's at the top of the list right now because I was just updating it this morning. So find the repository that is building Discord bots with Twilio Autopilot. That is the one that we're going to be working with. And uh, I've got three things I want to point out here, and then we'll go ahead and, uh, and get into it. First, um, there is a run on replit button just above the main image on the readme file in the GitHub repository. This, if you don't have a, if you don't have a Replit account, you'll need to create one. But this will let you basically click and deploy the code that we're going to be using. Again, I'm going to step through all of this stuff, so you don't need to worry about it at this point. I just want to 
uh, note these things before we get into it. The second thing is the, the prerequisites. I just went through the different platforms that we're gonna be using. So uh, you will need an account for, actually you don't really need a GitHub account, uh, but if you wanted to fork the code, you would. You really don't need to do that. You can just move it right into Replit. But a GitHub account, a, a Twilio account, a Discord account, and then an account on Replit. And in all cases, a free account is all you need to follow along with the stuff that we're going to be doing in this workshop. All right. One more point I want to make, and that is up here. If you have any questions about this or run into any uh, issues, if you're going to do this um, uh, after the event or during the workshop, you can go ahead and leave any questions that you have in the discussions, which I've turned on in the uh, in the repo. And uh, there is also a link out to a course. One of the things that we do at Dabble Lab is we create a, a lot of developer educational material, and we're working on. A, uh, an AI solution for generating uh, develop tutorial videos. And so we were using this as an example for one of them. So if you click on the course link, it'll take you out to that and that's free as well. So if after the workshop, you've got need a refresher, need to go through the steps, that is available. All right, with that, we are going to go ahead and jump into it. So I am out at, again, it's uh, github.com slash dabblab. And this is, I've got the steps that we're going to walk through down here. And um, the the code is here also. It's pretty simple. I'll, I'll walk through with what's going on with the code. But we'll start um, with this first step here, which is we're going to create an autopilot FAQ bot. And again, you need to be logged into Autopilot. I am here. Uh, and to I'm I've changed to the beta, the the UI. Let me see if I can. Oh, there's uh, I'm using the uh, the the new beta console. So if yours looks a little bit different, the uh, the steps are pretty much the same. You want to go over here and you want to find explore products. You want to find Autopilot first, which is this option right here. Okay, and in Autopilot, we are gonna build a bot. And we could build this from scratch. It would be pretty simple. Uh, I'm gonna use one of the templates just because there's one that will save us from having to create uh, sample data. And we're going to be creating a support bot, so a bot to answer questions. So this FAQs template will work perfectly for that. And um, this will test the autopilot bot after we set this up. But basically, this is a, uh, a bot that will, uh, the, the sample is, I think it's, what is it? It is, uh, yeah, it's like an internet service provider is the sample. So there's some questions in there in the template that we can use uh, to um, simulate maybe what an internet service provider would be uh, providing for support. And then we just wanna do create the spot and we wanna give it a name and I'll call this um, days demo like that. The name, it needs to be unique so uh, the I don't think I've used this one, so I think we're good there. And then also no spaces or special special characters. Dashes are fine, so go like that. And uh, I I have my base bot now that is ready to go. Um, we'll just test this real quick, and I'll come back and talk about adding uh, questions um, a little bit later, but let's um, let's first go in here and uh, just test it. We can use the simulator to do the, the testing. And let's see. And I'll start with like, just, hi. 
And so I get a response back here. I can answer questions about your internet plan, um, like replacing a modem or transferring or canceling a plan. And I'll just um, ask the question, how do I transfer? And the bot responds. And the reason that it's responding again is because these questions were part of the template and we'll come back and we'll talk about adding questions so that this works for uh, for your uh, specific use case. So um, now what we need to do, I mean, this is a functional bot at this point, but we need to plug it into a, a channel. In our example here, we need to plug it into Discord. So we've got a little bit more to do. We'll pause at this point with um, autopilot and we'll go back over here. Step two is we're gonna set up a, a Discord server. So like I mentioned, I'm going to be using the um, web-based version of Discord, and I'm logged in now. Uh, so if you go to discord.com and log in, if you don't have an account, you can uh, create one. And um, let's see, we're going to create a new server. And I'm going to just choose this option to create my own. And uh, for me and my friends, and I'm going to call this API days FAQ. And actually, you know what I can do here? I can, um, I'll paste this in the chat if anybody wants to jump into that server. There you go. All right, uh, so we we now have our server and just like you saw me do here, you can invite people to the server and uh, that is how, if you haven't set up a server in um, Discord before, that's how you do it. It's very, very simple. And uh, right now I'm the only one online. I'm using this account here, this Dabble Dev account. So uh, I've got my server now. I need to set up a bot in the server. And to do that, I need to create a, uh, a bot user. And so we're going to do that. Um, the step here, there's, there's actually a, a couple of things we need to do. Uh, we need to create a Discord application, and then we need to create a bot user. And then after we've done that, we need to authorize the bot so that it can access the Discord server. And if you already have a Discord server, you don't need to create a new one. You could authorize the bot for an existing server. If you're doing development, um, I, I generally recommend um, setting up a, a server and just using that for development. And you can delete those. It's uh, it's easy. And I'll, I'll go back through at the very end and walk through all the cleanup steps as well. All right. Um, so for this here, this is going to be, you're going to go to discord.com slash developers slash applications which is here, but I'll close this and just show you because the link is in here. Um, so yeah, create new server here, not server, applica application, excuse me. So we're gonna first create a new Discord application and that is just a matter of clicking this new application button and giving it a name and I'm gonna call it API Days Demo 2 as well and then create. And that's it for creating the application. You could add, I'm not gonna do this now, but you could add a, an icon, um, like an avatar icon for the, uh, the, the server, which is uh, probably not a bad idea to do. And then we need to create a, a bot user for this application. And to do that, we just come down here to bot and then click this add bot button. All right, yes, do it. Um, and I'm gonna leave the, uh, actually, I'll call this FAQ. So the username that the bot is gonna use is API Days FAQ. And uh, that's all we need to do on this bot tab. We, we need to set up, um, OAuth to authenticate the bot with the server. 
So we'll just go from here, save my changes first. And then uh, we'll go from here over to the OAuth tab or menu on the left-hand side here. Um, actually, before I do that, let me show you one thing. We're going to we're gonna need some credentials. We're going to need, once we get over to, to Replit, I'll talk about this again, but we're going to need Twilio credentials. We're going to need Discord credentials uh, for our code that we're going to set up on Replit. Again, I'll, I'll bring this up again, but we're going to come back here and we're going to be using this token, this bot token. So uh, just a, a quick note since we're here, but let's go over to um, OAuth now. And we're going to need to do a couple of things here. We're going to need to set the scope, uh, which is the uh, the purpose, and that is going to be bot. We're using a bot, and then um, or that's going to provide the uh, access for the functionality. And then down here, the permissions that are required, the scope permissions. Uh, this bot just needs to. What does this bot need to do? I think just send a message. So. The way this is going to work is the user is going to ask a question and the bot is going to respond by sending a message to the uh, the um, server channel. Okay. And then once this is done, we need this URL here. And this is the URL that we're going to use to authorize the bot. Go over here and show you. So we're working on this step now. Step number four. And so let's go back over here and do that. I copy this URL and uh, open up a new tab in my browser and just paste this URL in. And then uh, on the authorization screen here, we're authorizing this app or this bot. And we're authorizing it for this server. I'm, I've set up a, a test Discord account. So if you've got access to, or if you're a member of uh, multiple servers, you'd see all those servers in the list. Uh, but in this case here, uh, I've just set up the one server for this demo. So that's why that's the only one showing up in the list. And then we continue on and we authorize and complete the captcha. And we are done here. Um, so at this point, let me close this tab. If we go back over to uh, Discord, you can see I got a notification there. We can see now that there's another user in here, and that's the bot user that we just set up, the API Days FAQ. Uh, and you can see from the, the tag here that it's a bot, but it's offline. Uh, and that's because we haven't written any code to uh, log the, the bot in and to uh, manage what the, the bot's listening for and all that stuff. And that's what we're going to do next. That's what's going to tie all of this stuff together. And like I mentioned, we're going to do that with um, using replit.com. And so in replit, I'm going to spend just a second here talking about replit um, be, uh, because you might not be familiar with that. So Replit, like I mentioned, is a uh, is an IDE. It's a web-based IDE, and uh, REPLs is the term that they use for um, a project. I, I think I, I guess it's sort of the, like the the app itself. And uh, one of the cool things about Replit is it supports fifty different programming languages. This you don't have to do. I'm just going through this real quickly to show you Replit. Uh, And I'm creating a REPL called API Days uh, Demo, and I'll make this public. And like I said, the, the REPL is your project, your code project. And um, in addition to having a code editor, log, you also have a runtime environment. And so this run button here, you can see I get an output here, uh, hello world. And you can run web apps, you can uh, run anything. And in our case, we're gonna be running a service that is gonna respond to requests from the, uh, the, the Discord service. So we're not gonna be using this, um, but the, uh, the 
not this project here, but the uh, you'll see what's going to happen in just a minute. I'm going to be copying the code from GitHub. And so we let's go do that now. Go back here. And then if you go back over to GitHub, I mentioned in the introduction that there is a run on replit button that I put here up on the top. So if you click on that, that is going to take you right into your replit account. If you're not logged in, it'll prompt you to log in. If you don't have an account, you uh, will, will need to create one. And again, the, the free account is fine. So this is create that button creates a new REPL, a new project, and it names it the same as the GitHub repository name. So building Discord bots with Twilio Autopilot is the name. And the readme comes over as well. And uh, that's helpful because uh, at this point now, we're going to need to set up some uh, environment variables with credentials so that this bot can access autopilot and access Discord and uh, all of that good stuff. And that is our, uh, our last step down here. This is what we're going to do. And then I'm going to walk through also, which is not in here, step uh, we're going to test, but we're going to also walk through creating new questions. So we'll do that in just a minute as well. Um, OK, so here we're going to create the bot handler service, which really we've done. It's all in this file. And I'll let me talk through uh, quickly what's going on here. It's, it's pretty simple. We're using a. Um, uh, an NPM module called Discord JS, which makes creating Discord bots super simple. The documentation is excellent. This is a really, really, really basic example. There's a lot that you can do from like uh, sending cards and um, uh, like visuals and, and links. There's a, a lot more than what we're going to be doing today in this workshop, but. Uh, the, uh, the Discord JS, if you're developing a, a Discord bot using uh, Node.js, which is what this is with JavaScript, which is what this code is, I highly recommend that. And then uh, to communicate, we're also communicating with Autopilot. So this code is really just sort of acting as a proxy between Discord and Autopilot. So what's happening is the requests are coming in to the, the bot from Discord. And then this code is just passing those requests off to autopilot. And the custom channel that I mentioned is here. Uh, so this endpoint is the endpoint that we're calling, the autopilot endpoint that we're calling to pass in the, uh, the message that we're getting from Discord. And I just set up a channel, this custom, and then you can this is you can use whatever you want here. I've used uh, Discord uh, because we're using Discord. And then there's these here, these like process.env, Twilio account sit, Twilio auth token. These are environment variables. And the way that you set environment variables in Replit is through the secrets over here. So if you come over on the left hand side, the secrets icon is where you can set up these environment variables. So um, we'll, I'll just set them up first, and then I'll show you where to actually get the values. So first one we need is this Twilio account, Sid. Actually, yeah. Actually, we'll go get that right now. So um, the Twilio account, Sid, the Twilio auth token, and the Twilio bot, Sid are the, um, the three things that we need to get from uh, Twilio. So if you go over to your autopilot console or your Twilio console to autopilot, we'll get the um, we'll get the account SID and the bot SID first, and then we'll get the secret. If you go here to the, the settings, you'll see over here on the right hand side the assistant SID is the bot SID, and this is the account SID here. So I'm going to just copy that. And go back over here and paste this in, the account SID. And then we also need the bot SID. Probably should have named this 
assistant SID because that's what it's named over there, but I didn't. So that's that, but th that's this here, the assistant SID. So we'll copy that and come back over here and paste that in. And so now we've got these two environment variables. We also need the, um, the Twilio auth token and that you're gonna get over here. Uh, I'm using a, a, a demo account, so you're gonna see this, uh, but you typically don't, whoops. You typically don't wanna share this. Um, so you wanna copy this is your auth token, which is on the, uh, the, the, the default dashboard when you log into the Twilio console, it's here. And I'm gonna go back over here and the um, yeah, auth token value. And that's that. What else do we need? Uh, one more environment variable, and that's this Discord bot token. So I mentioned earlier that that's the one that's in the application setting for Discord. And I've still got that tab open. So I'm gonna go over, I thought I had that tab open. <laughs> Where is it? Yeah, here it is. Uh, yeah, so if you go um, back to your discord.com slash developers slash applications, and then go into the application, uh, and under the bot. And then this token here is the token that we need. So you wanna copy that. And that is gonna be the last environment variable that we need to set up. So we've got four of them. We've got the Discord bot token, the Twilio account SID, the Twilio auth token, and then we've got the Twilio bot SID. At this point, we should be ready to go but um, we need to run this and this will run as a service. And to do that, all you need to do is click the run button. And one of the other things that's cool about Replit, if you've worked in uh, with Node.js and, and JavaScript, you might be familiar with NPM, which is the, the Node uh, package manager and installing like third-party dependencies. This is all done sort of automatically for you by um, Replit. So that's what's going on right now is Replit is installing the dependencies and the dependencies are, you can see those over here as well. Where is it packages? Yeah. Uh, Axios, which is a package for making HTTP requests, which is what we're using for calling the uh, the autopilot API endpoints, and then Discord JS, which I mentioned earlier. So these are the two uh, third-party packages that uh, that we're using. And if we go over here, see this ready, that's actually part of the code. So that's happening right here. So once it's started up and it's listening for uh, events, then we get this ready log. So it's running right now. And, and while it's running, it, it's also logged into the Discord server. So if you go to the Discord server and um, go to our, uh, yeah, the server we set up here, the API days FAQ, you can see now that our API days FAQ bot went from logged off to now it's logged in. And the way that users would use this at this point is they would, um, and this you can change too. Uh, the way that I've got it set up is you type explanation support um, and then a question. How do I transfer? Transfer my service. And you can see I get a response back. Transferring your plan to another account is easy and free of charge. So basically what we just did is we created a wrapper for the autopilot bot that we created. So at, at this point, we've got a fully functional 
uh, support bot that users can use through uh, Discord. Let me take a, a couple of minutes. How are we doing on time? Uh, I think we're fine actually ahead. So that's good. Um, we'll take a couple of minutes. I wanna just go through and show you how to add questions and um, troubleshoot. So not that you'll run into any trouble, it's easy, <laughs> but just in case. So we'll go back over to uh, the, uh, the Twilio console. And here, the autopilot bot, uh, I mentioned uh, tasks really briefly. So, so tasks are uh, the things a bot can do, and the um, the tasks are associated with or are trained uh, based on things users might say. So, a user is going to say something, and that is uh, going to get matched to or not. Uh, but if it's trained, it'll get matched to uh, one of the tasks, and then the task has actions; it can do something. So in this case here, we are we have been hitting that where is it transfer plan. So this task here. So if we go into this task and take a look at it, uh, we can see that it's trained with some sample utterances or things that users might say. You don't have to have like every possible iteration of the way somebody might say something to get a, a question answered, and that's one of the really um, powerful things about autopilot and natural language understanding in general, because it's machine learning under the hood, we just need to provide some, uh, some examples. Generally speaking, you wanna provide a minimum of 10 examples, uh, but more is better. Uh, let's create a, we'll create a brand new one just to walk through this. But before I do that, let me um, switch to the, the program task. So here, the, the program task, the, I mentioned there's actions. So when the task gets triggered by something a user says, the bot is going to take action based on that. And in this case, there are two actions that are happening. The say action is what the bot's saying back. And you could change this to anything that you wanted. And then the listen action is the bot's listening for a response back to this. So we're going to create a, a brand new task and we'll create, uh, let's see, um, we'll create a task called, what can we use? Uh, let's see, how about um, operating hours? And I'm adding this task here. And then the operating hours, I'm gonna provide some utterances, uh, some samples to, uh, to train it. So I'm gonna to go to training here to do that. Um, and do you open now, whoops. Uh, what are your hours? You open on weekends. Uh, are you open after seven? And I, I said you should normally have 10. I'm gonna stick with these for now, but you should have more. If this was a production bot, you'd wanna take the time to, uh, to create at least um, 10 samples. And again, more is better, uh, but we'll go with that. Um, and then switch to programming. And really we just need a response to this. So this is what the bot is gonna say back when it recognizes that uh, something the user said is associated with this task operating hours. So I'll say, let's see, our out. Hours are Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. standard time. Okay, Let's save that. And you'll notice down here, now that after we add 
make any changes to uh, the model. And in this case, making change to that task and adding those samples is going to require that we rebuild the bot. And you can do that. You'll get a prompt down here that says that there's been edits and that uh, because of the edits, we need to rebuild the bot. So we just choose build model. And this is usually pretty quick. It's done there. And at this point, if we go back over to uh, our server, we'll try it again and we'll say, uh, are you open? And you can see we get the response back. So the uh, support response. Um, let's try something else. This time I'm asking a question that the bot hasn't been trained on. And you can see I get a response that says, I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. Uh, please say that again. Uh, if they keep saying it over, it's not going to change anything. So that might be something that we want to change. What's happening here is in autopilot, um, because the bot can't associate what the user said to any existing task, it is going to uh, hit the fallback task, which I'll show you. Uh, let me see. What is the fallback tax? I saw the cold. Oh, here's the fallback. It's right in front of me. Okay, so um, so this here, if we wanted to change what was said, if uh, a question, I'll say, I don't have an answer for that question. That's what we're going to go with for right now. Um, and then I'll test it again how we did on time okay i'm gonna save some time for q a if you have any questions uh we'll have uh, about 10 minutes for that it looks like because i'm just about done so we'll do this one more time And you can see I get my new response back. You might have noted that I didn't build anything. In this case, um, I didn't need to rebuild the model because I haven't changed what the bot is listening for. All I've changed is what the response back is. So when you make changes to the, the, the programming, this stuff here, the actions, uh, you don't need to rebuild the model. But if you add new sample utterances, something like that, you do. The other thing I want to show you here in autopilot before we wrap up and take any questions that you might have is uh, queries. So if you go into queries, queries are the inputs that the bot got. And you can see in here the how many colors are in the rainbow came in. And you can see that it's not associated to a task. This is really helpful for uh, getting your, uh, your head around questions that are being asked. Uh, that maybe you haven't anticipated. So one of the cool things about setting up a, a support bot or an FAQ bot using autopilot and going at it like this is you can really easily come in here and filter the queries and see all of the questions that are being asked that don't have answers. And then of course, at that point, what you would do is just create a task like we went through to answer that question. And you could either assign it if it's a question that there already is an answer for. You could just assign that to the uh, existing task if you've already got one created. Um, or you could create a, uh, a new task and assign it that way. So that is that is it for this, uh, this workshop. We went through, I'm going to walk through the, uh, the, the steps again, uh, high level. We started with. Um, Oh, the jumping off point, github.com slash dabble lab 
for walking through these steps outside of the workshop. And then it's this project right here. And um, the prerequisites, again, you need a, a GitHub account. Actually, you don't really, um, but uh, you want to have a Twilio account, a Discord account, and a Replit account. And then uh, all of the steps that I walk through are here. So log into Twilio, create a new bot. This will take you right to the, uh, the pre-trained template section of the Twilio console, the autopilot console. So right here and uh, give it a name. The second step, and this is an optional step, is to set up a Discord server. If you don't have a server, it's a good idea to, uh, or if you're doing development, it's a good idea to, to set up a new server for development, but you could associate it to any existing server if you have uh, permissions to do that. Um, authorize the, uh, the the bot so that it can access the server and, well, configure the, the Discord bot application. So you wanna go out to the developer applications in Discord, create an application um, and then assign it a bot user and then uh, set up the, uh, the, the OAuth like we went through, um, authorize the bot to access the server. And then finally, just click on this button here to create your replit, uh, REPL on REPLit. And then the, the last step here, important, is to add the environment variables so that it, uh, that it runs. And with that, I will open it up to uh, any questions. I think we have uh, just about, um, it's about 10 minutes, I believe, for, uh, for questions. So uh, any, any questions? Make sure I'm in the right spot. Okay. I'm not seeing any questions. Make sure I'm in the right place. All right. Well, I'm not I'm not seeing any questions. Uh, so I think we will leave it at that. If you do have questions um, after the the workshop at any point, again, if you go to the GitHub repository, there's a discussions tab there and you can post any questions that you have there if you're walking through this and you run into uh, to any issues. Uh, I do have a question here from Alex. Um, how deep or complex can autopilot conversations get? The, they can get um, pretty complex. I mean, you can uh, you can use the the actions to to go back and forth and to uh, manage like a, a refer to as a, a multi turn conversation. So a, a back and forth conversation. Uh, the bot that we set up is really simple. So that, like setting up an FAQ bot is is probably the one of the the easiest use cases. But you can set up very, very um, complex bots with, with autopilot. And, and it's, uh, it's we, at Data Lab, we work with a lot of different bot platforms and uh, autopilot is just really easy to, to work with. You can get going quickly, but it doesn't lack anything in functionality uh, uh, either. So you can scale it up. We've uh, rolled out autopilot bots for very, very large organizations and, and complex bots. So it's very, very, functional, but uh, it also is, is really easy to, to get going with. Yeah, good good question. Any, uh, any other questions? All right, well then I'll leave it at that. I wanna thank you all so much for attending the workshop. Enjoy the rest of the, uh, the, the conference. And again, if you have any questions after this, let me know by leaving those in the discussions on the, uh, the GitHub repo, and I will follow up on those just as quickly as possible. Thanks so much.